Okay, so let's now look at the more superficial strata, beginning with the stratum spinosum. So superficial to the stratum basale is this stratum spinosum, sometimes referred to as the spiny layer. So we have the stratum spinosum because of what is happening in the stratum basale, basically mitosis. So if you remember from the last recording that each time these keratinocytes, these keratinocytes in the stratum basale divide, the older keratinocytes or keratinocytes are pushed up. And this is where they're going to end up in, in the next layer, the next stratum. So this stratum spinosum provides strength and flexibility to our skin. We have about 8 to 10 layers of these keratinocytes, all bound by the desmosomes. So these keratinocytes also begin to produce a coarser bundle of these keratin intermediates. Remember that if you see keratin intermediates, I want you to think it's not yet the final form of keratin. And because it produces these coarser bundles of keratin intermediates, it gives these keratinocytes or keratinocytes a spiny appearance, hence the name spiny layer. Now, we also begin to see the lamellar granules and bodies accumulating in the cytoplasm of these keratinocytes, right? So this is where we start to see these specialized organelles that are filled with these stacks of lipids, sort of like a stack of pancakes, and each pancake being these lipid. So we have specialized cells that are found in the stratum spinosum, and these are called the dendritic cells, also called the Langerhans cells, and also called the intraepidermal macrophage. So these cells are vital to our immunity. So what they do is they patrol our epidermis, looking for things that shouldn't be there. So let's say we have a bacterium. All right, that is found in the epidermis and that should not be there. So these dendritic cells, Langerhans cells, or intraepidermal macrophage will quickly engulf them. All right? They'll take them whole, basically through the process of phagocytosis, therefore neutralizing the bacterium. So they're critical to keeping our skin healthy, our epidermis healthy. The next stratum, which is more superficial to the stratum spinosum, is the stratum granulosum, the so-called grainy layer. So what we find in the stratum granulosum is three to five layers of these keratinocytes or keratinocytes. I like to refer to the stratum granulosum as the dying layer. This is the layer, the stratum, where we start to see these keratinocytes beginning to die. And if you remember apoptosis, the so-called programmed cell death, and this is what should happen. So basically, the keratinocytes, once they're in this stratum, they begin to die. So this marks the transition between the deeper metabolically active strata, where these keratinocytes are very much alive, and the uh, dead cell layers of the more superficial strata. So you'll see, as we continue to move up superficially, these keratinocytes basically are going to be dead, and the dying occurs, once again, in this stratum granulosum. So these keratinocytes or keratinocytes will stop producing keratin. They're done producing keratin. However, we now start to see these keratohyaline granules. So these are dense granules. And what they're going to do is they're going to cross-link the keratin fibers. So they're going to bond, basically bundle them, them up together and assemble them to where we now have the final form of keratin. Right, so just imagine you have these keratin intermediates, so these keratohyaline granules will take those keratin intermediates and bundle them up together, and voila, we now have the final form of keratin. Also, another thing that occurs in the stratum granulosum, we start to see these lamellar granules exocytosing their lipid package. So remember that the lamellar granules or bodies are filled with these stacks of lipids. So this is all happening in the stratum granulosum. Another thing that happens in the stratum granulosum is if we look at the plasma membrane of these keratinocytes, so I'm going to go ahead and illustrate this out. So what I'm illustrating is the keratinocyte found in the stratum granulosum, and this is the plasma membrane. And I'll just abbreviate PM for plasma membrane or cell membrane. Of course, we know that it's made up of a phospholipid bilayer. So what will happen is we start to see proteins that will deposit onto the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane. So these red lines that I'm drawing is meant to show proteins. So proteins basically start to stick 
to the inner leaflet of our plasma membrane. So once again, these are proteins. So we no longer have your typical plasma membrane anymore. So as a result, the plasma membrane gets thicker. It thickens because of these layers of proteins that have deposited onto the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane. So we're going to refer to this thickened plasma membrane as a cell envelope. And once again, this all occurs in the stratum granulosum. Now, remember, this is not what normally should happen. So if we're looking at a typical eukaryotic cell, we do not have the formation of a cell envelope. And this is important, and you'll see why later. Now, superficial to the stratum granulosum is the stratum lucidum. And of course, we want to emphasize that this is only found in thick skin. This is the so-called clear layer. Now, how many keratinocytes are we going to have, or keratinocytes? We're looking at about four to six layers. Now, remember, these cells are now dead, right? They are now dead. And I'll explain why that is in just a second. So the cells are dead, they're flat, they're densely packed, and they have no organelles. Furthermore, their cytoplasm is jam-packed with keratin. And, of course, we've got the thickened plasma membrane, which we refer to as the cell envelope, that formed when these keratinocytes were in the stratum granulosum. Now, why are the cells dead? Remember, in the stratum granulosum, you have these keratohyaline granules that have bundled all these keratin intermediates, and now we have the thick, coarse form of keratin. So what ends up happening is it overwhelms the cell. So imagine you have all these rope-like proteins inside the cytoplasm. Where are these organelles going to go? They're literally pushed aside because they're just filling up with all this keratin. And this is exactly what needs to happen. So these organelles start to break down. So the nucleus breaks down, the mitochondrion breaks down, all the organelles that you find in a eukaryotic cell. So they're disintegrating. They're literally getting pushed aside, overwhelmed with all this keratin. And this is why by the time the keratinocytes once it's past the granulosum, stratum granulosum, they're technically dead. Then we move on to the most superficial stratum, and that is the stratum corneum, okay? The so-called horny or cornified layer, the so-called durable overcoat. And this is the layer that's exposed to the outside world. So it's the exposed surface of our skin. So how many layers are we looking at? Well, we could be looking at 15 to 30 to even 50 plus layers of these keratinized dead cells. Now remember, there are no organelles and they overlap like shingles on your roof. So it's resistant to abrasion, it waterproofs our skin, it reduces water loss, and it also protects our skin from invading microbes. And if you look carefully, you can see these fine lines. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the keratin that literally has filled these keratinocytes or keratinocytes. So by the time it gets to the stratum corneum, all you're looking at is a sac, what was once a cell filled with keratin. And that is what our outer layers of our skin looks like. In other words, the stratum corneum. So one of the things that was discussed in the previous slide is that we have these lamellar granules, also called lamellar bodies, these specialized organelles found in um, cytoplasm of the keratinocytes, jam-packed with lipids, right? These flat, pancake-looking lipids. So we know that these lamellar granules begin to accumulate when these keratinocytes or keratinocytes in, are in the stratum spinosum. What we want to now discuss is what happens when we get to the stratum granulosum. So this is where, ladies and gentlemen, these lamellar granules or lamellar bodies will exocytose their package. So what I've drawn in this part of the uh, slide is the exocytosis of these lamellar granules. All right, so please note I'm showing you the lamellar granule or lamellar body, at least one of them, exocytosing their lipid package. And so what they're going to do is these lipids will adhere to the thickened plasma membrane, which we referred to once again in the previous slide as a cell envelope. All right, so the only way that these lipids will adhere to the plasma membrane is when it becomes a thick cell envelope. Otherwise, these lipids will not stick.
So this occurs at the more superficial strata. So we see this in the stratum cornea. And so we refer to this thick layer of lipids that adhere to the cell envelope as intercellular lipids, okay? So what this does is it helps provide a waterproofing environment for our skin. So one of the things that we have to remember is that by having these intercellular lipids as well as the keratin is a means to prevent water loss. So I like this image down here is because we see what should normally happen. So this is a normal epidermis and you can see that water does not evaporate. So we don't lose a lot of water. And this helps minimize dehydration. Now, there is a condition called lamellar ichthyosis. It's a genetic disease in which the cell envelope does not form. All right, so for whatever reason, the cell envelope does not form. So even if these lamellar granules or bodies discharge all of their lipid contents, there is no cell envelope, so they cannot stick. So as a result, the skin looks very scaly, sort of like a fish. So going back to the bottom picture, we could see what happens when we don't have this intercellular lipids because there is no cell envelope. So water now starts to seep through. So in other words, we're losing water. So now this individual is more subjected to dehydration because we no longer have this waterproofing layer provided by these intercellular lipids. So it can be rather disfiguring and as well as it can also be quite itchy because their skin is extremely dry. So what we've talked about is a process called keratinization, also referred to as cornification. So this is where we form the layers of dead protective cells jam-packed with keratin. And of course, we see that mostly in the superficial strata, such as the stratum corneum. So this occurs on all exposed surfaces with the exception of our eyes. So it takes approximately four to six weeks for a cell or the keratinocytes or keratinocytes to go from the stratum basale to the stratum corneum, which ultimately is then shed. So I like this image because it shows us essentially a summary of what occurs in each of this stratum. So here's your stratum basale, and of course that's anchored to the basement membrane via a hemidesmosome. And if you look carefully, you'll consistently see desmosomes, all right? So these desmosomes are illustrated as these structures, and this is consistent all the way till we get to the stratum corneum. And if you remember in our discussion of desmosomes, we find this in tissue that's subjected to a lot of stretching, pulling, uh, compression, and twisting, for example, abrasion, all sorts of things that our skin is subjected to. And the reason why we have these desmosomes is to make sure that these cells remain together. The last thing we want to have happen is these cells to pull apart, therefore the tissue pulls apart. Literally, it begins to rip. And we certainly don't want to have that happen for our epidermal layer, our epidermis. After the stratum corneum, the stratum spinosum, the stratum granulosum, the stratum lucidum, and finally the stratum corneum. So the fact that we have the stratum lucidum included in this image should automatically tell you that this is an image of thick skin. So I will not read the details that occurs in each of this stratum. I'll leave it up to you to read this on your own. So this particular slide summarizes what occurs in each of this epidermal stratum. So just like the previous slide, I'm not going to read the details that occurs in each of this stratum. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that up to you. So I've included not only, of course, the stratum name, but as well as the cell layers, whether or not it's present in thick skin, and if their cells are alive, the keratinocytes or keratinocytes are alive. So I hope by having this summary slide, it will make it easier to memorize and to know what occurs in each of these stratum of the epidermis. So this slide is a practice slide, and this is where I've left certain things blank. So I'd like you to go ahead and fill this in on your own. And then of course you have the previous slide to refer to. So hopefully this will help you memorize once again what occurs in each of the stratum of the epidermis. So in our discussion of the epidermal strata, we learned that the stratum lucidum is only found in thick skin. 
So what we're now going to do in this particular slide is talk about the two types of skin. So we have what's called thin skin versus thick skin. Thin skin is sometimes referred to as hairy skin. And the reason being is practically everywhere where we have thin skin, we have hair. Now, there is an exception. We don't have hair in the lips and the external genitalia. Now, the lips and external genitalia are considered thin skin. So, as I just said, it makes up a majority of the superficial epithelium. And the reason why it's called thin skin is because it's only consisting of four epidermal strata, meaning they do not have the stratum lucidum. Now, it turns out that in thin skin, the dermis is thicker than in thick skin, something that I've illustrated in this particular slide. So we're, we're going to look at my illustration that's obviously seen on the right. So thin skin contains hair, as I just said, with the exception of lips and external genitalia. It contains sebaceous glands, also called oil glands. It also contains merocrine, which is also referred to as eccrine sweat glands. And in some areas of thin skin, they also contain apocrine sweat glands. So the armpit region, the pubic region, the nipple, and the scalp. So the next type of skin is thick skin. So thick skin is hairless, all right? There is no hair associated with thick skin. So where do we find thick skin? Well, we find it in our fingertips, our toes, the soles of our feet, and the palms of our hands. So if you know where thick skin is, in other words, the areas where we find thick skin, then everywhere else has to be thin skin. So if I say the skin on your forehead, then it's thin skin. The skin on your back, it's thin skin. So just memorize where you find thick skin, fingertips, toes, soles of the feet, and the palms of your hand, and any other skin that I give you has to be thin skin. The reason why it's called thick skin because it has five epidermal strata. However, the dermis is thinner than what we find in thin skin. So in thick skin, they do not contain hair. That's why they're hairless. They do not contain sebaceous gland, no oil glands. They also do not contain apocrine sweat glands. However, they contain a lot of merocrine or eccrine sweat glands. All right, so I want you to know this and take note of the difference between thick skin and thin skin. So let's go ahead and turn to this illustration that I did on the right. So here is my thick skin and here is my thin skin. So look at how thick or how much thicker I drew the epidermis. Now note the dermis, all right? So when it comes to the dermal layer, however, the dermis of the thick skin is thinner than the dermis of the thin skin. So please know this, I know it's a little confusing, but this is how thick skin and thin skin vary, okay? So these are actual images of thick skin and notice how much thicker the epidermis is compared to thin skin. So this is an image of thin skin and you can see that their epidermis is thinner, all right? And it's really pronounced when we look at the stratum corneum. So the stratum corneum of thick skin is way thicker than the stratum corneum of thin skin. And the image below is just another image comparing the epidermal thickness between thick skin and thin skin.